it's really important to recognize when um, there is a, uh, a issue and how we do that if uh, you're not able to train or things are different than uh, previous. Um, if your bowel movements are not um, as normal as they used to be, you know, recognizing a change uh, is really important because you need to be mission ready. Uh, you need to be healthy. You need to be uh, able to train and able to accomplish uh, the mission. And if you're not able to do that, then, um, you know, you're not really able to, to function as a, a service person. And so recognizing when there is a change, recognizing when there is an issue and taking care of that, seeking uh, help and guidance uh, during that time is really important. And, and you know, I tell uh, service people that, you know, it's important to be your own advocate, uh, recognizing that when you have a problem, you need to get it taken care of because only then will you be able to accomplish the goal and, and to be able to function in the mission. It's really important to recognize what um, we call as uh, clinicians uh, red flags uh, when you see blood uh, in your urine or in your stool, uh, when you're not able to uh, have a bowel movement within a couple of days. Uh, if that's your normal, uh, then that's okay. You can wait a little bit longer. Um, if you have experienced some type of trauma, you know, within the military, sometimes we are faced with um, uh, episodes where we may get hit uh, within our uh, abdominal re region or in our uh, back uh, area. Uh, and those are things that, you know, kind of make you think twice when you experience pain. You know, other things that, um, especially for uh, service women with female biology, if there's any chance of pregnancy, uh, then it's really important to um, seek uh, further guidance. Uh, when you cannot eat uh, without experiencing pain, when pain wakes you up um, uh, in the middle of the night and it just doesn't go away, um, those are things that I would call red flags that make you, uh, you know, think twice and make you really think about uh, seeking some type of care. When you talk about your own health, uh, one should not be embarrassed, uh, first of all, but it's good to write down those symptoms that uh, you were having or that cause concern and cause you to seek um, care. Uh, write them down uh, because sometimes it's easier to give a piece of paper than to actually talk about those things. Uh, and so just, you know, you can um, talk to yourself in the mirror and, you know, kind of get comfortable with talking about certain things such as, you know, that change in bowel movements. You know, a lot of times we say, are you having diarrhea? Or when was the last time you had a bowel movement? And, uh, you know, a lot of times it's hard to uh, be able to answer Answer those questions without getting uh, embarrassed. And so it's important to, you know, get that comfort because that's the only way that a clinician will be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, and, you know, knowing what um, is actually they need to focus more on uh, by getting that history. And the only way they can get that history is by you, the, the uh, patient, the service person, uh, being able to uh, expound on those uh, symptoms. It's really important that each uh, service person recognizes that, number one, they are their own advocate. Uh, if they feel that they did not get the um, attention or feel that they just were not heard, then, you know, it's best to, number one, go to their chain of command uh, and uh, really explain what's going on and, and the problems. And then, you know, ask to potentially see another clinician. That's okay. Uh, and especially, you know, when it comes to one's health. Um, and so many times uh, we don't, don't feel that, you know, um, 
we're you have enough time even uh, to get those questions uh, answered and things like that. Uh, so you know, again, writing down the uh, issues that you need to be addressed, those symptoms, so that you can really focus in on what's going on. And if you don't feel that you're being heard, then again, you know, go to your chain of command, see if you can see another clinician. Those things are okay, and they're actually welcomed, uh, especially if you do not feel that you're being heard. It really depends on the condition. Uh, there are certain um, things that are what we call rules um, uh, based on the area of operation where you're going. Um, you know, for instance, if uh, someone has uh, Crohn's disease, um, there are certain uh, areas where they cannot go unless they're stable. And so that does not mean that you get out of the military, but you may need waivers, letters of stability. Uh, different things uh, will need to be um, uh, presented to ensure that you're going to be able to go um, to a certain area safely. It's all about your health and not only ensuring that you're there to uh, be able to uh, accomplish the mission, but also making sure that you're at your best and that your wellness and health is number one. Uh, and so um, there are, you know, rules and there's um, different things that um, align up with uh, different conditions. But again, uh, knowing those and seeking the health of your uh, healthcare clinician uh, is really important uh, to be able to know those things prior to uh, any deployment or mobilizations that you may be facing. It depends on uh, which condition we have. Uh, a lot of times it's just a change in the diet, uh, whereas we know that changes in diet can exacerbate, make uh, conditions worse. It can also a lot of times make conditions better. You know, if you're able to increase your fiber, if you're having constipation, um, increasing uh, fluids and, and water uh, and things like that can definitely improve uh, certain conditions. Uh, if one may have uh, celiac disease, you know, ensuring that they have a gluten-free diet uh, really helps to improve those particular symptoms. So, uh, yeah, there are uh, ways that uh, we can help without medications. But again, it really is dependent on the condition and uh, what the treatment for that particular condition is. There are uh, certain conditions that um, have been found to affect fertility, um, and I mentioned celiac disease. Uh, that's an autoimmune disease, and sometimes uh, that can impact fertility. Um, something else that uh, is not necessarily a GI um, condition, but individuals experience abdominal pain, and that's like endometriosis is where, you know, the... Um, uh, uh, tissue, the endometrial tissue grows outside of the uterus. And a lot of times that can uh, impact fertility. Just think about the stress and the change in uh, one's uh, body. Uh, we know that those particular things can uh, impact uh, fertility. So, uh, it, you know, there could be some direct uh, uh, impacts and then some indirect uh, impacts, definitely. One other thing is if uh, one is uh, noting like unexplained weight loss, um, that's really, really important. Um, and we know that we're always trying to maintain a healthy weight. But if you're losing weight, if you are not able to um, really hold on to your, what your normal weight is, if you're having fever, um, certain things uh, are really important for one to know that, you know, I need to seek out uh, some additional help, uh, ensuring that we 
continue to advocate for ourselves, continue as service people to recognize that yes, mission is uh, first and foremost, but if you're not healthy enough, if you're not well enough to accomplish that mission, then something is wrong and we need to um, impact and make sure that we uh, address those particular issues. So uh, health and well-being, uh, number one, uh, because that uh, definitely impacts readiness uh, and um, making sure that one uh, advocates for themselves. Uh, and if that's not able to be accomplished, then there are others that will advocate for you. Mm -hmm.